Ever since I was a kid, I've always been surrounded by family. Whether it was in person or virtual. After all, my family has had reunions for the past 60 years, and the current patriarch is my uncle, William Henry Harris, known as Bill. He's 86. To me, my uncle embodies one of my favorite quotes. Friends are the family you choose for yourself. 64 years ago, my uncle and his family of friends found an abandoned rec center in West Baltimore and have since made it into a focal point for their community. But as the members of the center get older, they worry about who will carry on their legacy and help the community continue to grow. This is their story. Well, Cloverdale is uh, self-funded. We pay dues, the club members pay dues. We sell raffle tickets, we've had dinner dances. We normally, before this COVID situation, we did bus trips to Atlantic City two or three times a year. My name is Walter Leslie and I'm the vice president of Cloverdale organization. Being a, a member of the board at Cloverdale and being a member period, you sort of wear a lot of hats at Cloverdale. Whatever needs to be done, we jump in and do it. Whether that's trash, selling food, refereeing basketball games, playing in basketball games. Uh, currently, I organize the Senior League uh, for basketball players, uh, as well as tournaments for kids out of town, guests. I say whatever it takes. Our dues are like $15 a, a month. So it's $180 a year. But sometimes it's not enough to cover everything, so we have to just pitch in whatever we can. But we're still looking for that outside help to really do a thorough program, a better program, a more inclusive program, you know? So that's what we're looking forward to. As a self-funded basketball center, Cloverdale ACBBA strives to provide activity and leadership skills to inner city youth. But while participation in the basketball games has steadily increased year to year, one hardship still remains, recognition and funding from the city. We work one in the summer. At the playground in the summertime, call the high school in the winter. So we keep it going year round. But little is it known, I don't know, we're known all over the city, but the city, don't, the city officials don't seem to give us any kind of, uh, any kind of help as far as letting people know what we do, what we, uh, where we are, and how long we've been here. This is a rough community here. 21217, this is the zone that Freddie Gray was in, caused all that havoc and, and, and the burning of the buildings and all that stuff about five years ago. This is the same area. There's something, there's a mystique about Cloverdale when you come up here, play basketball, you enjoy yourself, and every other activity that goes on, you take it away from Cloverdale. We don't have that craziness up here. Taking the issue of funding and lack of recognition from the city into their own hands, in April 2021, my uncle invited me to sit in as the Cloverdale board members met with their new District 7 councilman, James Torrance, to discuss their concerns and plans for their community's future. If you look at, if you look at our our motto at the bottom of that paper. What does it say? Each other man shall. That's what we're about. Okay? So the idea is that we're going to give the respect that you do. You are a council person, you are a leader, and that's what we expect to look at you for, leadership. If you're not going to give us any leadership like the rest of them guys have been through here, except Sheila Dixon, What good are you? It's for what we're doing in the community and for the city. I totally agree. Do you have any idea what we do for the city? Listen, I grew up in Rex. I used to help with uh, John Murdoch. He used to do a lot of work with Murdoch and he used to do a lot in Baltimore City. So I know the work that you guys do, the tournaments that you guys host, the impact you made in the lives of people that I know. One of the things I know about this place, it provides opportunities for you. And that's one of the things that's the core of my values. So I'm just here to help you and ask you what do you need from me and how can I help you move further. So what we've done already is applied for a 501c3 accreditation. 
and it's in the process of being yay or nayed right now with the IRS. If that come about and we are able to write a grant, get money from the state or foundations, that we'll be able to do a heck of a lot more for our kids in this community. Um, just in the interim, you know, with, with us in this 5013C, any, any type of support the city can give us, you know, to put the cleaning up and the maintaining of this structure right now, you know, that would be great. You know, regular trash removal. Yeah, that's, that's what we get stuff like glass it. on the court, you know, where, the way it makes it dangerous. It, I, mean, I don't know if it's possible, but you were saying if there's any way, I know that would be a help to us. And we're doing neighborhood cleanups. Um, yeah. Part of it is that we're also using our squeegee kids that are currently known to us. Mm -hmm. We give them that transition income by identifying cleanups. So what I'll do is I'll see if we can set up a schedule for them to come through and do the That'd be great. Anything helps. That would help. That would help. That gives them work. That keeps your courts clean. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just pay for them. I'll get you some new nets. Because <laughs> the city won't take a while to get it to you. I'm just going to be real with you. You can count that as my first donation towards your father once he's there. Thank you so much. <laughs> Funding is so important because as one member told me, without Cloverdale, he isn't sure where he'd be today. My name is Earl Rocky Garner and I am the president of Cloverdale ACBBA. I was able to play high school, I was able to play junior college for two years, and I was able to play at a four-year institution and I didn't have to pay a dime. My parents didn't have to pay a dime for me to play basketball. And it all started here. And I always felt if I could get that opportunity from this, this setting, if I could just give maybe just one other person in, behind me that opportunity. And that's where we got to, you know, we want to give back to the youth. We've had quite a bit of success in dealing with kids on our playground going on to college. Uh, just to name a couple, uh, three of them. Anyway, I can name four. Sam Cassell was one of the most outstanding ones. Okay. He played basketball up here. We took him back and forth to different cities and all. New York and all, you know, uh, North Carolina, uh, West Virginia. Uh, Keith Booth was another one that went on to play NBA basketball. Um, Marvin Webster, he played up here. He went on to play with New York. Nickel, Nickelbacker. I mean, not Nickelbacker, New York Knicks. That's what they call them now, New York Knicks. And Ken Bannister played basketball in New York. So, you know, we got quite a few guys that played basketball overseas. We got a lot of guys that went on to college and played basketball, like Walt Leslie, Al Leslie, Donald Leslie, and Earl Garner. Those guys played back, uh, in college. Okay, and a whole bunch of others. Some of our kids, as a matter of fact, one of them right now is still playing in the NBA. Carmelo Anthony. He played in our league here. We took him up and down the road too. Looking back over the past year, I think the biggest impact recording my uncle and his family of friends has had on me is just how much they're willing to fight for their community. Whether it's putting on summer camps for kids, providing jobs to young adults, ensuring the older generation gets to fellowship every Sunday, or inviting council people into their space, the men and women of the board truly wish to make an impact on the lives of those around them. More that we need to do because we're an integral part of the community. And <clears throat> the linchpin to all of this has been uh, your uncle, Bill Harris. My name is Dr. Warren C. Heyman. I'm chairman of the board for Cloverdale AC BBA. We have an opportunity now in response to COVID-19 to provide more of an outreach and more programs for young people. In order for the program to grow, we're going to have to have a paid staff and monies to support what it is we're trying to do. So what's next for the men and women of Cloverdale? Well, after a year of hard work, in May of 2021, they were officially given 501c3 status. They are currently in the process of applying for grants and working to preserve the history of the courts for future generations. But I think my uncle sums it up best, so I'll let him have the final word. We're looking forward to being even better than we have been in the past, much better. 
So we've been good in the past. I pat ourselves on the shoulder every time I get a chance because we've done good with nothing. I'm here for you guys. I've been here for you. And I really want to keep this program going. As long as I live, I'll fight for you. I'm, fight, I'm fighting almost every day to keep this thing going and it's improving. Right now, we're in the process of making a, a real uh, facelift in this place. So I want you guys to stick with me. Keep coming out here on Labor Day or come out here every day you want to come out here. But the idea is that this place will be here for you. I want to thank you and thank you.